So did you like lose a bet? Uh, no, you said we were dressing up. And that's what you wore? I thought we were doing favorite Star Wars characters. Kind of got a sci-fi Batman thing going on. Huh? Sci-fi Batman. No? Hi, and welcome to the Halloween edition of This is Gravel. We're going to call it the Halloween edition because we want to put on little mask things. It really has nothing to do with Halloween, but it is close enough that we get to wear moustaches. With me today is our friend Leland is back. We're so excited to have you back. Well, I'm glad to be back, Bobby. How's the pedicure? I'm it, it was lovely. <laughs> Um, traumatizing at times. Yes, um, yes. The recovery process was <laughs> uh, longer than expected. But here I am, back and ready to talk. This is gravel. All right. Speaking of gravel, have you gotten out on much? Um, I did actually this past Saturday. I went on my first gravel ride in probably two months, I think I'd wow. tallied up. And so uh, my absence was in um, due to, in large part, the opening of Gravel City Adventure and Supply Company, right. uh, or at least the reopening of, and we are moved into a new location. And so um, that has kept me quite busy and kept me away from the show the last couple episodes and certainly away from my bike. But <laughs> Saturday, with our grand opening, um, I did lead a 15-mile gravel ride on Good. my fat bike, and I loved every minute of it. Got any from hills? Or? Nope. You know, leaving from Emporia, seven and a half-ish miles out, mm -hmm. seven and a half miles back, you're really not getting into the hills. So Good. Pretty flat. Good. So what about you, Bobby? So you've been gone for, you know, two episodes, but this is the point where you I say... No, it's been sad. This point where you say, what 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 did you do last weekend, Bobby? We we really want to hear you about you talk about yourself. <laughs> so if you want to lead in with that. Oh, nice. how I've missed that part of the show. Bobby, what have you been up to? Yay! Because you did ride your bike last no, weekend. I did, but I rode a um, 120-mile event, local event, Laugh the Lakes, for benefited the Emporia Police Department Association Fund. Um, and the uh, we have a local troll uh, system, Camp Alexander here in here in Emporia. Benefited them also. So it was a good event. It was a long event. I got to got a taste of uh, near single speed when I blew my derailleur, but kept on riding and finished uh, yeah, finished 120 miles. So it was good. It was very windy. I think we had gusts so what 20 to 30 miles per hour that day. day, consistently all day long. So the wind was consistently over 20. The gusts were closer to 30. So it was a long day, but it was good. So. This is gravel, people. Blow out a derailleur, keep on trucking. <laughs> and uh, hopefully we've been teaching you some of those skills that will keep you rolling because that is the spirit of gravel is to just yeah. get out there and see new sites, push yourself, not only physically, but push your equipment and your skills. And, and all of that kind of comes together to make a great experience and a good story to tell afterwards. Yeah, you know, and I want to say it's not like I'm any level of, uh, of a mechanic here at all. You know that very well, but... <clears throat> when you sit and look at your bike long enough, you kind of figure, oh, maybe if I do this enough, it'll keep it keep the chain yeah, tight enough that this might work. And can't screw it up. Yeah, as long as yeah, as long as the wheels keep turning, then you might as well keep riding the thing. Absolutely. So, so yeah, it was a good weekend. But um, it's coming up on fall season, so get ready for cooler temperatures, cooler weather. Yes, so. perfect time to be riding bikes. Absolutely. You know, so with fall weather, it's going to bring uh, <laughs> shorter shorter evenings, less light in the evening. So we got with a uh, friend, Adam Blake, and uh, he's going to talk to us a little, a little bit about bike lights. Uh, this is Adam from Gravel City Adventure and Supply Company. And with the changing in the time and the changing of the seasons, I wanted to talk a little bit about different aspects of lights and what you can expect out of different light sets. Um, the first thing to know with lights is there are two different styles. There are ones to be seen, which are generally your smaller flashing lights, um, blinkies that are rechargeable or run off of like watch batteries, or lights to actually see and show you the way. Um, something like this from Lazine or from Light in Motion. Um, things that you can get with a light um, are gonna be lumens, which is gonna be your ultimate output, um, and then beam pattern and waterproofability. 
um, are some of the key features of each light. Um, lights that uh, have a better beam pattern are going to use uh, the lumens more effectively and show you the way more effectively without spreading the light uh, to places where you're not riding. Um, lights that uh, like this light in motion urban are a rechargeable light uh, via USB cord. It's going to be uh, a waterproof light. Uh, it's also very impact resistant. And something like this is an 800 lumen light, which at a full blast is more than enough light for gravel riding. Uh, on medium, I like to say that around 400 lumens is the perfect amount for gravel riding, especially in a group. Something that you're going to want to do and make sure you have is a great tail light. Um, something like this is called the Super Flash, uh, mounts to a chain stay or seat post, and is a one watt blinking light. Um, when you're out in the gravel, and you're out at night and night is coming quicker, um, you want to make sure that you're seen from cars coming from behind you as well as in front of you. Um, another thing that you can do to help be seen at this time of year is wear clothing with reflective striping and piping um, and bright colors. Uh, cycling shorts that have ref are generally black but some have more reflective uh, lining than other ones. Um, and light high-vis green or high-vis yellow is another really popular color. Um, check out the Gravel City Facebook page for a night ride coming up, and we'll have a sale on lights following that day, and we'll uh, hope to see you around. As Adam mentioned, um, you don't have to stop riding just because the days are getting shorter. We really encourage you to get some lights and continue to ride. And join us if you are in the region uh, Wednesday the 26th for that night ride. Gravel City will be having that all day sale on lights. So if you can get in over your lunch hour and get some lights and get them charged at a discount, all the better. Reiterate that as a beginner friendly ride. Yes. So please come out and enjoy the evening yeah. ride with us. Yeah, great so. opportunity to uh, ride with a group of people for your first night ride. Um, or even if you're a seasoned veteran of uh, the dark riding, come out and join us. I still can't help but think about you in the Princess Leia costume. Yeah, that image it's is really messing stick up with my show for a right while. Now. <laughs> I'm not sure that was a good image or not, but it was there. And so yeah. I keep thinking about that. So uh, we have some Q&As. Are we ready for Q&A? I think we're ready for Q&A. It is my favorite part of the show. It is Probably the, the biggest reason It's your I favorite came part back. because you get to listen to yourself talk the most. Yeah. It is what it is. All right. Well, in our first question, not only did I get to hear myself talk, but uh, producer Matt came on site and uh, got me on it for a little uh, interview and answer at DK headquarters. And the first question comes from Sarah Flotting. And she was inquiring about static training plans for long epic rides. And so let's go ahead and hear my response to that. Yay! And so uh, before I can really answer that question, let's uh, tell our viewers what a static training plan is. Um, as the name implies, it is uh, static, meaning that it is uh, a plan written out for a set period of time and it has all your workouts and it's pretty immovable because there's no expertise beyond that. They typically come in eight weeks, 12 weeks, or 16 weeks. And so over the course of that duration, there'll be workouts outlined that you should go do. Um, to answer Sarah's question directly, she's been struggling to find one for epic endurance events. Typically static training plans um, cover distances of 100 miles or less because um, they're so variable that it's hard to really put something to paper for that amount of time for a longer event. But we have done such a thing and you can go to dirtycansofpromotions.com um, and you can actually buy our 12-week static training plan for either the DK200 or the DK100, uh, whichever distance that you're planning for. Um, naturally, those two training plans are going to work for any other event of those distances that you might be going out for. So even if you're not participating in Dirty Kanza, um, you know, the Dirty Kanza 100, of course, will help you prepare for any event. Now, there are some limitations to the static training plans. And so because they are static, that means you don't have anyone talking with you about the plan. Um, there's no instruction. Um, and most importantly, um, there is no plan B for what happens when life gets in the way and you can't complete the plan as it's laid out on that um, workout schedule. And so what do you do when uh, life gets in the way or illness creeps up and you miss a few key workouts? Do you skip 
them and move on to the next week? Do you um, find uh, some time to shuttle things around? I mean, those are questions that are really best served by um, working with a coach, and that's the real value. Um, and so in addition to the static training plan that we offer at DirtyKansasPromotions.com, I am also our resident coach. And so uh, I work with athletes um, on a personal level, and we devise training plans on a weekly basis, and we're in constant contact to make sure that the plan is uh, working as it's supposed to and that we're working around scheduling conflicts. And so in short, Sarah, um, visit DirtyKansasPromotions.com. I would highly encourage you to start with a static training plan um, at $24.99. It's a really um, inexpensive way to have a structured training regimen um, that would give you an idea of what it would require uh, to get yourself prepared for the Dirty Kanza. Now ours being at 12 weeks is relatively short, admittedly. I mean, when you're preparing for something like the Dirty Kanza, it requires um, a long training plan. And so um, one thing you could do is to repeat that cycle a second time if you start it far enough out. Or um, again, uh, get with uh, myself if you'd like, or find a coach locally that you'd like to work with and have them help devise you a plan um, that you can follow over the next nine months or at least six months leading into Dirty Kanza. So, sometimes they're hard to find, but training plans are out there. Um, coaches, is, coaches are accessible and, in my opinion, quite affordable, and they're a great investment uh, into your success of completing epic events like Dirty Kanza. All right, Sarah, I hope that answers your question. If you have any questions, you can contact us at DirtyKansasPromotions.com. Next question. This is a good one. And it's a question about bike frame materials. So um, at the heart of the question here is weight versus comfort when it comes to what your bike is made of. Is there um, a correlation between, uh, or is there a sacrifice, I guess, when it comes to getting a lighter, faster bike? Do you sacrifice comfort on the longer rides? So... The traditional answer I would say would be yes. And I think if you look at the core heart of the question, the bike materials, yes. If you're just talking about the frame, frame only. <clears throat> Carbon stiffer, aluminum tends to be stiffer than, you know, you have <clears throat> Titanium, steel, aluminum, and then carbon. I'd say is flexibility to, to stiffness. It's, it's traditionally what you think. Um, but I would counter that with the components today, the seats that we have today, the, um, the, the frames that we're, that we're seeing on the carbon side today with the different dampening effects that they have built into the frames themselves, that you can't just go strictly by material when you're talking about comfort over the long haul. I would say you're more thinking about geometry because carbons are built more usually for performance end of it. So they're built with a more aggressive style of geometry. Example, my wife, I got her a, a nice carbon warbird and <clears throat> actually she's ridden mine and she has an aluminum warbird, hurts her back, but she's a beginner rider. She wasn't ready to jump straight into the geometry of the warbird. So she's on a fat bike, loves the fat bike, different style of geometry to it. Not necessarily Still anything about weight. Frame, though. Still carbon frame, but right. nothing it is totally com comfortable. So you have carbon that's comfortable, different style of geometry though. So as far as the, the comfort level of the frame materials, I think that's a little getting a little bit more gray area now. My thoughts, thoughts on it? Well, I want to uh, make sure that everyone remembers that uh, this is a very casual approach on this show. And so there is a lot to get into when you get into the science of the frame materials. And so hopefully we can provide a little bit of feedback uh, without getting too technical about it. But uh, there's two things to consider when you're thinking about the frame materials, if that's what you're hung up on and looking at. Um, that's price and purpose. You've got a budget and you've got a price at which you're willing to spend. And so if the question is carbon work, the extra money? Yeah, of course it is if you've got that extra money to spend. Um, but what is the purpose of what you're going to be doing to ride mm -hmm. that bike? Is this a bike for commuting from your house down to the office? You probably don't need a performance carbon frame bike. Steel is very durable, easy to repair, and far more affordable. So to piggyback on what Bobby was saying beyond price and purpose, once you figure that out and you say, okay, I can spend the money, um, but I want to get the best bang for my buck, um, you do have to take it a step further from the material itself and look at the design. And just to give you an example, to talk a little bit more about the Warbird and what Salsa has done with their engineering, um, it has less to do with the frame material, the carbon, 
versus the aluminum and more to do with the elongated wheelbase for more stability on gravel and the class 5 um, VRS vibration reduction system which allows the rear triangle to eliminate vibrations in the chatter you get from gravel and so that has to be equal part of the conversation as the frame material um, but yeah the frame material itself you're basically paying for for less weight they're all going to be durable they all have their good properties it's just once you find the engineering that you want um, are you willing to spend the extra money for carbon um, knowing that it's going to be a little bit lighter because when you talk about comfort um, it has less to do with the material itself and more to do with the engineering of the bike yeah and i would say you know as, as you go up in price you talk about prices that's going to affect the equation too you can get some really pricey thai aluminum um, steel that are every bit as uh, as weight friendly as some of your mid-range carbons yeah so, it just depends on your price level also. So this is a, about a two hour over a beer discussion type question. So yeah, I would hopefully. love to have that with you. Come down for the Dirty Kansas to Emporia and I'll meet you at Mulready's Pub and we'll talk for a couple hours over it. Yeah, if that doesn't get you there, certainly uh, reach back out to us. We'd love to continue that conversation offline, but Absolutely. Uh, that's the nuts and bolts of it. Okay, so uh, days are shorter, less light. Um, Cooler temperatures. So do you need to drink the same amount of water when the temperatures <clears throat> drop as you do when it's hot out? We spend a lot of time talking about yeah. drinking water when it's hot. So do we need to keep up our hydration? You know, this it, this has come up, I think, I think it's even was briefly touched upon, maybe even last episode, actually, now that I think about it. But um, <clears throat> it's good. It's a good question to ask. Um, I drink a heck of a lot less water when the temperatures are cooler. Um, I just don't feel as dehydrated when I'm out there, so... I can, so, go, I can go for a four hour ride and so but we've also uh, talked about me not being yeah let's not okay. being the prime example of let's how to put the coach hat on here for a second the technical answer is yes you do not need to drink as much water when it's cold of course that's I just said that that's what i just said we understand that but let me make sure one thing is very clear you must drink water when you ride your bike you must drink water to live if you were to sit on the couch all day. So yes, you have to take water when you're out there riding your bike. Coffee? Even when the collar Can I take coffee on the bike ride with me? Yeah, at least it's a fluid. It's better than nothing. But um, I would recommend still a bottle every 60 to 90 minutes, even when the temperatures drop. We talked about when it was hot, more um, closer to a bottle every 40, 30 to 45 minutes. So that is a drop in water intake, but don't uh, confuse that for not needing water. When it's I didn't say cool you didn't outside. need it. I just said I don't drink it always. So. Okay, <laughs> next question. <clears throat> okay, uh, this one's a dangerous question. Um, being married and finding time for longer rides has gotten more difficult. Recently married and tried to go on some longer rides recently. How do you guys fit it in? You're both married. Okay, disclaimer at the bottom. Producer Matt just got married last weekend. Is this um, producer Matt's question? <laughs> I can't comment on that. <laughs> um, here's what I do know. <laughs> well, let me let me answer that question with a follow-up question. How long do you want to stay married? <laughs> Um, well, what's worked for me is just simply not riding my bike as of late, but that's not to keep my wife happy. That's because there's a lot going on in life. Um, uh, with it, with everything, you got to find a, a happy medium now and you're sharing your life, not only with your bikes now, but with another human being, another human being who's probably going to want some time. So, um, couple that ask for a long ride with, um, a sweet gesture and some time spent with the wife and find the right balance because um, it shouldn't be a full compromise one way or the other. You know, as a spouse, you should recognize that riding bikes is a passion that some of us have and it's a good healthy outlet and it should be um, prioritized uh, but not above um, your new life. Your marriage counts for now. Look hey, at you go. Look man. at me go. How long have you been married? Cycling. Uh, we just hit our one year mark, so I kind of feel like one year expert. right there. Okay. Well, I'm going to hit my 20 year mark. Oh, let's in, hear the wisdom. In a month and a half. Um, I will simply say that the happier the, the, the family is, the happier you're going to be. So uh, figure out a way to work it in without messing up anything with family life. The more important question is how many bikes can you buy and stay married? <laughs> Um, I think that's that's the most important thing you need I to do. I think we addressed that uh, three episodes right, back. So. Right. So, next question. All right. Um, Halloween plans. Okay. Um, Halloween is fast approaching. Um, this is our Halloween episode. This is our 
um, last show before Halloween, Bobby. So tell the world and the viewers what you're going to be doing. Unless it I'm, involves illegal activities like pumpkin smashing and throwing no. eggs. We don't want to <laughs> no, that, no, not this year. I've gotten too old for that. My knees are too bad. I can't run away when I get in trouble. Um, no, I'm going to enjoy my Halloween season this year with the family. So we're going to take the kids out trick-or-treating like we always do. Um, we're going to do a maybe possibly a bike ride that you're going to talk about here in a okay, minute. Okay, question before you progress on I'm gonna your I'm going to wear plans. the Princess Leia Family. <laughs> uh, that's something I'll have to think about now. Um Traditional neighborhood trick-or-treating, or now it seems very common to just go to the mall or yeah, go to a parking you know, lot and do all your trick-or-treating in one location. Obviously, there's safety that you got to think about nowadays that we didn't have to when we were younger. But no, we still do the traditional neighborhood trick-or-treating. We go out Wonderful. with our kids. My daughters are 6 and 10, um, and they enjoy going together with the cousins. And we go out and walk around the neighborhood and do trick-or-treating that way. So. Not saying the others are bad, the other way is bad, the mall trick-or-treating, that's perfectly fine too. So, yep. Wonderful. <clears throat> bike ride? We might be doing a bike ride. So, there's... Okay. There was, well, there's, a, there's something you're going to talk about here. Yeah, well, I guess uh, my plans are twofold. For um, October 29th, I will put a plug out there for um, our Boo Cruise, sponsored by our local Babes on Bikes group and Gravel City Adventure and Supply Company. And we will be leading a costume-inspired bicycle ride. And so we do ask that the costumes are bicycle-friendly, meaning no <laughs> low-hanging um, obstacles that can get tangled up in wheels or anything like that. So uh, be conscious of that. But we'd like to just get together, have a good time, take a short 10 to 15-mile ride. Um, and to top that off, we would like to encourage all of you to get out on your bikes on costume and share your pictures of your bicycle friendly costume and you on your bike with the hashtag uh, Boo Cruise. And then beyond that, for the day of Halloween, Christine and I will be sitting around the home hoping that some people still do their neighborhood trick or treating. You want us to come by? Yes, of course. We can come by. What time can candy be ready? Um, sundown. What? Okay. Yeah, we can come by. Got to come out when, the, when it's dark. Do you know where the place is? <laughs> I might have sold you the house. Yes, I, I know where the place is. So. As always, follow us on social media, Casual Cyclist, Bobby Thompson, Gravel Guru, hashtag this is gravel, and uh, always, always send in your questions. We love answering them. Happy Halloween.